I'm Anders Sandberg, Senior Research Fellow at the Future of Humanity Institute at the University of Oxford. Our working title for the episode is How the World Will End, yeah. the most likely scenarios. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to do that, yes. So I'm going to rattle off a few scenarios and problems. When I think about the end of the world, I'm usually thinking about the end of planet Earth. And it's going to happen somewhere around seven billion years in the future. The reason is that the sun that is giving us life is slowly aging. And as it's aging, it's becoming brighter. Earth is going to become warmer. Partially this is going to be compensated by you know, the biosphere adapting. But eventually something has to give, and most likely what happens is that Earth overheats, the oceans boil off, and there is no longer going to be life on Earth. Supernovas, when old stars implode and then explode, cause tremendous energy release and would be quite deadly if you're close to one. Fortunately, right now we're far away from any star that could go supernova. So while they could devastate the Earth, right now we're pretty safe from them. One form of disaster that has happened in the past is supervolcanic eruptions. Normal volcanic eruptions release a lot of dust and gas and might be quite dangerous if you're close to them. Some of them even lead to vast explosions which can send tsunamis across oceans and cause uh, changes in climate for a few years. But there are some eruptions that are so vast that they can cover an entire continent in a thick ash layer and they would threaten billions of people. They would also threaten the entire climate because over several years afterwards there would be dust in the atmosphere making the world colder and making it harder to grow food. In the past, this might have almost wiped out our species. There is a theory that Mount Toba in Indonesia erupted 75,000 years ago and might have reduced the population of humans back then to a handful. It's controversial and uncertain, but uh, these eruptions do happen rarely, and that's something worth keeping an eye on. If a black hole were to pass by the solar system, it would change the orbits of the planets, which would be very bad news for us because we're kind of dependent on having an orbit that allows us to have liquid water on Earth's surface. This is most likely a very rare event, so most astronomers believe that the probability of this ever happening across the history of the solar system is minuscule, so I'm not lying awake at night worrying about it. Compared to natural threats uh, to humanity, human-made threats to humanity are much more likely, unfortunately. The good news is, of course, that since we're human-made, we humans also have much more control over what's going on. However, we have also built bigger armies. We have more powerful weapons. We have intercontinental missiles that can bomb anywhere in the world with nuclear weapons that could cause a nuclear winter. Not just kill people in the cities they attack, but the fires and the soot from those uh, devastated cities would be lofted into the stratosphere and cause a long cold period, maybe 10 years long if it's a big nuclear war, that would prevent agriculture in much of the world, at which point the survivors would starve. This is a very serious threat that we need to try to defuse by reducing the risk of great power conflict and nuclear war. Climate change is sometimes framed as, oh no, we're going to die because of the world overheating. But that is unlikely. There are some regions that might get too hot for humans to live in if we don't stop it. But the real threat is changes in agriculture, which means that our food supply might be threatened. At that point, things can go badly wrong. So it's not directly the climate, but how it's affecting everything. And we have this vast, fragile world to take care of. Suddenly one robot gets red eyes and says, must kill all humans. Why does it think that? The real problem with advanced artificial intelligence is that it might be very good at doing what we tell it to do, but we are not very good at telling it the right thing. And it might not care that it's doing damage. 
Making artificial intelligence that cares about human values is really hard because we humans don't quite understand our own values. Philosophers, poets and artists have been trying to understand it for thousands of years with some modest uh, success. But now, within a few years, we need to put it into computer code. That's hard. People love zombie apocalypses. It's of course not very likely, but there are many forms of apocalypses that replicate like zombies. The zombies are very much like a pandemic. There are things that spread and at first they don't seem much of a problem. There is just one zombie. Then there are two, then four, then eight. And before you know it, there are zombies everywhere. That kind of disaster is a very different one from the kind of Big Bang disaster when there is a supernova or something threatening everybody at the same time with tremendous force. The zombies start out small and grow and you need to stop the problem, nip it in the bud as the English say, before it becomes a vast problem. The biggest threats to planet Earth itself are very different from the biggest threats to the biosphere which are also somewhat different from the threats to humanity. But we, being humans, of course care most about the threats to our own species. We need more efforts to safeguard our planet. They could be like the NASA DART mission, trying to deflect an asteroid, or Space Watch looking for threatening asteroids. But we need it for many other risks, ranging from solar eruptions. We need satellites to watch for them and warn our electricity grids beforehand that there might be a geomagnetic storm coming. We need ways of quickly detecting new diseases and pathogens and stop them before they spread too far. We need better ways of safeguarding against badly value-aligned AI that misbehaves and so on. We need many different kinds of initiatives to safeguard our planet and our own lives. In many ways, I think the end of the world is always dependent on what world you want to live in. The ability of humanity to stop itself from going extinct is amazingly vast. And I think we are going to fight on to try to reach the ends of the universe. And I'm very happy to join that fight to make us survive.